Welcome back guys. Week four of our season is in the books and oh my, we did it. We pulled off the upset in one of our toughest games on the road against our division rival, the 49ers. Before we get started, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those notifications down below. And let's not waste any time and get straight into talking about what happened in this last game. We did the unthinkable, managing to come away with a 24-3 victory over the Niners. A huge game for us, and the main story behind it was that we shut down their star-studded offense, holding them to a single field goal in the entire game. But let's start by talking about our side of the ball. Our run game was working all day today, as our rushing duo of James Conner and Corey Clement consistently got solid gains play after play, which ended up totaling over 100 yards on the ground. Now, on the other hand, our passing game was nothing extraordinary with Colt McCoy only totaling 147 yards, but it got the job done and we got some huge chunk plays when it mattered to keep moving the sticks. And our best completion of the day was to our young tight end, Trey McBride. It came early in the fourth with us already up two scores. McBride ran a quarter route against San Fran's best corner in Charvarius Ward and with an incredible toe drag effort, came away with the sole offensive touchdown on the day. Our other massive contributor on the offense was the rookie, Michael Wilson. He only had two catches on the day, but they were two huge ones to total 55 yards and get the last big play of the game to secure the win for his team. Now, it wasn't a cakewalk by any means for us as their defensive stars definitely made their presence felt, starting with middle linebacker, Fred Warner. He was making every tackle possible, finishing with nine total and got in the backfield twice to stop two runs behind the line. The reigning Defensive Player of the Year, Nick Bosa, also put on the pressure as he got two sacks on the day. And he caused havoc moving our offense backwards and ruining drives as he dominated our O-line. Bosa wasn't the only one to get in on the pass rush as this Niner defense got home two more times to McCoy. The first came from rookie safety Jair Brown, who came in untouched on the blitz and got him for the sack. The last came from the former Eagle, Javon Hargrave, and he made the play at a key time to knock them back, which would eventually keep them out of the end zone and keep them within two scores. This game broke truly open and the start of the second half as it was tied 3-3 and on the ensuing kickoff, Andre Bocelli returned it 98 yards to bring it all the way home for the score and get his guys the first lead of the day, and more importantly, the momentum to take them all the way. Now, we can talk about this 49er offense, and we completely shut down their passing game. We brought the pressure to Purdy, holding him to a mere 133 yards, no touchdowns, and a vital interception, which we will get to in a bit. We just threw him off his rhythm all game, and he kept missing throws. Now, the leader of this defensive masterclass was our superstar safety, Buda Baker. He finished with nine tackles on the day, getting them behind the line once, and he just seemed to continuously make the big tackles when it mattered. And his day became that much easier because our pass rush was on fire, finishing with four total sacks, and the most impactful guy was the former Jet, Bryce Huff. He finished with one and a half sacks, and he did that going up against one of the best left tackles in the league, Trent Williams. And we were wondering if we made the right move bringing him in, and he may have just proved it. His teammates also got involved late in the third, starting with our defensive tackle, Lecky Fotu, and he was not fooled by a play action and quickly brought Purdy down for the loss. Later that same drive, Cleland Farrell took advantage as San Francisco went forward on fourth down, needing to make a play, but the pocket collapsed. Purdy couldn't find an escape route, and Farrell cleaned up to force the turnover on downs. The one guy who was getting his for the Niners offense was Christian McCaffrey. He was explosive with every touch, and although he couldn't will his team to a win, he finished with 100 all-purpose yards on the day. And the last guy of note was our veteran corner, Xavier Rhodes. Nearing the end of the half, he snatched this one away as they were looking for Devo. And not only did he prevent them from putting up points, but he guaranteed that we could tie the game up as he returned at 32 yards before going down at the 10. After the game, Colt McCoy stopped us in the locker room to tell us he's really proud of how we came out and got the job done. Everybody chipped in and we came away with a big upset win. And we said, let's keep it up. We told him he's one of the leaders in that locker room, so keep pushing those guys every day, and we can keep this going all season long. 
And with that win, our entire team earned 2,500 XP. Following this, we looked over the stats so far this season and we thought it was the time to lock up one of our guys to an extension because Bryce Huff showed he can already take over a game as he won twice against one of the best left tackles in the game this week and he's averaging a sack a game so far this season. So we sat down at the negotiation table and he had a lot of interest in staying here for the long haul. So we offered him a four year deal worth 26.4 million with him making an average of 3.2 million a year in salary. And we agreed, Huff signed the extension and he will be leading our pass rushing unit for years to come. Now, this is a great deal for both sides. For us, he shows we made the right move bringing him in with the preseason trade and we lock him up until the end of his age 30 season. This gives us the chance to let him go at that point, or if he's still producing, get him yet another extension. For him, this gives him a chance to continue to grow with a team on the same timeline as him, and he can potentially hit free agency in a place to make good money as he nears the end of his prime. After the first four weeks of the season, we decided to go take a look at the division standings, and surprisingly, we find ourselves second with our two and two record, but let's understand how all the teams got here. Starting with our division leaders, the Seahawks have stormed out to an early 4-0 record as they squeezed out a close one against the Rams, then went into Detroit and got the edge in a high-scoring matchup. In week three, they handled business against the Panthers, and they now head into their bye coming off a win against a red-hot Giants team, which they themselves had two big wins against us and San Fran. Next, we look at the team we just dethroned, the 49ers. They started the season on fire, blowing out a scoreless Pittsburgh squad by 42, then demolishing the Rams on the road, and then they fell to 2-2 two and two following two big losses against the Giants and, of course, us. And lastly, we look at the 1-3 Rams. We already talked about their two losses to start the year as they went back-to-back -back in NFC West clashes. But they then went into Cincinnati and upset the Bengals on Monday Night Football. And now they are coming off their third loss as they were beaten by the Colts. And it doesn't get any easier as they now welcome the NFC East champs, the Philadelphia Eagles. We then moved on to looking over our coaching talent trees. And after our big game, we had some points to work with. And we decided to upgrade center focus, which will increase the likelihood of center signing through free agency. The offensive line needs to be improved, and with the rookie class not showing much promise at center, free agency may be our best option. We can now take a look at the news headlines for the week, and the game the entire league is excited for is 49ers-Cowboys. We faced both teams in the two previous weeks with very different results. It's going to be interesting to see how both of these top dogs in the NFC perform in this game. And it looks like both of these teams are reeling off a tough loss as Dallas played the Patriots last week at home and they gave up 18 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to give up a 15 point comeback to one of the worst teams in the league this year. It looks like the Chargers pass rush has had a big game this week, sacking Raiders QB Jimmy Garoppolo five times on the day. The Dolphins had a bounce back game after their 42-3 loss to Denver, grinding out a huge 14-13 win over their main rival in the AFC East, the Buffalo Bills. We talked about it at halftime. The Jaguars defended their second home in London as Travis Etienne had a career rushing attack today with three rushing touchdowns against the Falcons. We had another big upset on the week as the Washington Commanders dethroned the Eagles by one as they finished with a victory 22-21. to And taking a look at the tackle leaders across the league, we have a tie for first place at 37. One of them is one of our enemies in the division, the Rams' Quan Alexander. The other, a guy we are going to need to truly pay attention to, Cincinnati's Jermaine Pratt. And the reason we have to watch out for him is because we can now look forward to our upcoming game in which we take on the Cincinnati Bengals, a team who is only two years removed from being AFC champs, and they are looking to return back to the big game. And they are hot, coming off a big win in Tennessee. It was on the back of another outstanding performance from Joe Burrow in which he threw five touchdowns, a performance which earned him AFC Offensive Player of the Week honors. And he has been off to a hot start, near 1,300 yards through the air, 
13 touchdowns and only two interceptions. He is just so accurate with the football, a calm and collected leader for this team, and he is going to be a challenge to contend against this week. And his main guy who will be looking to get the ball to is his former LSU teammate, Bengals number one, Jamar Chase. A pro bowler in his first two years in the league, he is a dominant player in the receiving game, able to rip balls away from defenders, and he is also coming off a big game as he caught two of those touchdowns last week and got up to the 140 yard mark. On defense, their main guy to watch out for is defensive end Trey Hendrickson. He's coming off a bit of a down year after only getting eight sacks a season ago, and he has yet to pick up one over the first four games this year. But he can take over a game at any moment, and he's trying to get back to the season he had when they made the Super Bowl run, in which he came away with 14 sacks. The other guy to watch out for on this D-line is DJ Reader. Coming into his fourth year in Cincy, he is an amazing up-the-middle plug for them, and after we have struggled earlier on with star defensive tackles, it will not be an easy task to defend him. Now that we know who we're going up against, let's talk about our game plan heading into this game. Starting on defense, we know this Burrow-led passing attack is going to be a problem, especially with all the weapons he has at his disposal. We are going to focus on defending the middle of the field against the pass, so we can limit their big play ability and not allow them to get inside the sweet spot of our defense. Switching over on offense, we know their pass rush is a problem, but outside of that, they are not spectacular against the pass. So our strategy is going to be to throw it short. We're going to try to get it to our guys quick to avoid the pass rush and let our guys make plays with the ball in their hands. Before we set our weekly goals, we held our weekly press conference with the media and they asked us about the difficulties in facing Joe Burrow. It's a challenge for any defense to stop him and they want to know what style of defense is going to give him the most trouble this week. And we said, it all starts with pressure. If he gets too much time to throw, we'll get torched like everyone else. But if we can apply pressure and make him uncomfortable, he gives us the best chance to slow him down. So our goal coming out of that was to get two or more sacks in the upcoming game. Now we can continue that list of goals right now. After the sacks, we want to keep them under 200 yards on the day. While it's definitely a tough goal, if we were able to lock down the Niners a week ago, there's no reason we can't do the same against another deadly offense. Next, we want to pick up 300 plus offensive yards. Their defense is good, but it's not great. We are going to try and attack this team through the air, hopefully avoiding the pass rush and getting some big yards in the process. After that, we want to keep them under 25 points. We can't think it possible to keep them off the board forever, but if we can keep them under that mark, we have a much better shot at walking out with the win this week. And lastly, we want to finish with at least two passing touchdowns. Keeping with our game plan, we need to get this ball flying, and if we can take advantage of their defensive weaknesses, we may very well be ready to have another positive news episode a week from now. We finished up practice for the week, and thankfully, we have no additional injuries to report for the week, and neither do the Bengals, which means all hands will be on deck for this game. However, we did see growth from our key young guys this week. We will start with our first round pick, Paris Johnson. He has done a phenomenal job so far this year, keeping his side of the line clear. And this week he improved in his overall awareness and his pass blocking against finesse moves. Our second player was our second round pick, BJ Ojulari. Although he is still out with that upper arm fracture, he continues to improve on practice, learning new techniques, and he has improved in his play rec, tackle, man, and zone coverages. Next up was Trey McBride. He provided the sole offensive touchdown this past game, and he saw a ton of development following our big win. He improves in his awareness, break tackle, catching in traffic, pass blocking, release, and his medium and short route running. Following that, we had our defensive captain, Dennis Gardick. He focused on the coverage side of his game, and he improved in his acceleration, awareness, tackle, and zone coverages. And our last guy of note is the rookie receiver, Michael Wilson. He may not be getting a ton of involvement every game, but every time we go to him, he seems to come away with a huge catch. He improved in his awareness, catching in and out of traffic, jumping, and medium and deep route running. And with that, we have discussed everything we have needed to, and we are all ready to turn to our upcoming game. I hope you are all enjoyed. If you did, remember to like, comment, subscribe, 
turn on the notifications down below. And I will see you all next time as we return home to take on the Bengals.